Hey everybody, Ben coming at you from Ben's Audio Cave. So today we've got a real good one. This video has been two weeks in the making and it's the ultimate turntable mat shootout. So what am I doing here? Um, this is a topic that gets talked about and discussed in the audio world, especially the turntable world quite a bit. I've never seen in my life so many comments, threads, and arguments over which turntable mat's better, uh, they don't make a difference. They do make a difference. Use the one that the manufacturer supplied. They're, they're, don't use a mat at all. There's all sorts of adages. So I did the best I could to kind of show you guys, hey, here's what I've done. Let you guys make your own conclusions. Now, we are using YouTube audio. So for this video, to get the most out of it, you're going to want to either watch this on a computer and patch it directly into your sound system via either a DAC or a, a mini cable or something like that to see kind of a representation of what it really sounds like or at the minimum use like some high quality headphones and possibly a headphone amp because you're not going to hear a difference on your phone at all. Will you hear a difference at all? I don't know. I mean to me I can hear some differences when I patch it through my stereo. If I listen to it in headphones and I have listened to the video uh, back to, uh, yeah, there are some differences, but hey, this is a tool. It's for you. Uh, it's for you guys to use. So the, the other idea too is I've tried to make this as equal as possible. So one of the objections I can already hear somebody screaming about is, well, you're not really hearing a difference in the mat at all. What you're hearing a difference is the VTA angle of everything. So to kind of try to eliminate that, I got this Elvon VTA block. It's uh, pretty interesting. It's I don't think it's a good, uh, tool that you can necessarily use completely to set your VTA and azimuth. It's a, it is a good starting point, but here's what it has allowed me to do. I've been able to take this block right here and these lines and I set the VTA exactly the same according to this block for uh, every mat in this video. I started out with no mat as a baseline because that's the one that's going to be the lowest. And I actually had to dial my VTA dial all the way past zero to get it pretty close to where it was with my regular mat on there. Now, uh, I eliminated that variable. The cartridge I'm using is the Audio Technica PTG3032. Same cart, Emotiva PT100 preamp, same preamp directly into the same audio interface, same output levels. This audio has been completely untouched except for what YouTube is going to do with it when I upload it. So I would um, argue that this is going to be uh, fairly accurate. Are you going to hear any differences? I don't know. Are you going to hear a huge difference? Maybe. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get to it.
orange. So what'd you think? Could you actually hear any differences in the uh, audio at all? You know, some people are gonna say no. 
some people are going to say, oh my gosh, it was just completely different. And, you know, here's what I'll say from my conclusions. I am not moving away from my Funk Firm Acromat anytime soon. Now, I will say this. The Hudson Hi-Fi Acrylic Mat, if I had bought that first for 22 bucks, I might have stopped there because I do like some of the things. Now, these are the one things that I will talk about that the audio and the video cannot showcase. And that is static, because that's what a lot of people talk about uh, for a turntable mat. Now, the rubber mats, eh, pretty decent uh, static rejection. Now, this is what I will say. I don't have a whole lot of problem with static myself on records I'm going to listen to. Why? Well, it's because something I changed based on a comment I received uh, in my rinse water. I use a trace, trace amount of Groove Glide in my distilled rinse water when I clean my albums, and it works as a great staticide, and it, I can pull it out of the sleeve, and it doesn't stick to the platter at all. Now, that doesn't mean there's not static where I'm at, because I can go over here and touch the uh, turntable, and it'll zap me. You know, that I can walk across the floor here like everybody else. It zaps me. They're static. It's winter, people. But uh, there's not a whole lot of static the way I clean my records. Um, you can look at a vid another video on this channel for that if you guys are interested. However, I did take a record that I just cleaned without the treatment in there uh, specifically to make sure it had static. And it, it's not hard to do this time of year. And... Of all the mats, here's the static properties. The rubber mats, they do an okay job with static. Um, it, it's a little bit, but not much. You can, after you finish playing the album, sometimes you can kind of feel it uh, sucking it back down. Um, the felt mat, it's pretty awful. The cork mat, yeah, not very good either. Um, the acrylic mat and the acro mat were probably the two best for anti-static, but now as a disclaimer, I will tell you that I actually cleaned both of those mats with the same rinse water that I do my albums. So that is a, uh, that, that could, you know, explain why that is. Uh, the other thing I will say is as a tool and not just, you know, jewelry, uh, the Hudson uh, acrylic Turntable mat has one thing that was really enlightening that the rest of them just can't do, and that is it can help you actually set your anti-skate on your turntable. And uh, a lot of people have talked about this, use a CD, drop the needle, uh, move the dial till it moves barely in, or if it moves uh, not at all. Well, that's a good starting point, and obviously if they're tuned with ears, there's probably a very scientific way to do this. I have yet to do it, but I will tell you, when I put the Hudson Hi-Fi mat on there, I was like, okay, we'll give this a try, and I lowered my cartridge onto it, and it immediately started pulling back away, and I was like, whoa, because before I was trying to do it with the CD, and I wanted to be like really, really, really conservative, because I didn't want the cartridge to go flying off of the uh, CD, so... With this, I realized my anti-skate was set just a little too high. I followed the uh, recommendations of setting uh, the anti-skate to be equal with the tracking. Turns out my anti-skate should be a little bit less. Uh, it was, uh, I think, I'm tracking at 2 grams, and my anti-skate ended up being somewhere around 1.6, uh, 1.5, somewhere around through there. Uh, but... The whole point was it was I was able to do this with this $22 tool. And to me, I think that that's a great investment. So check out some of these turntable mats. You know, to me and to my ears, I've drawn my own conclusions, but I'm not going to try to solo yours. So here's what I will say. Drop me a comment. Let me know uh, what you thought about it. Did you hear something? Did you not hear anything? Uh, what are your conclusions? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. All right, that's it, and you guys have a great day, and we're out of here coming to you from Ben's Audio Tape. <laughs>